Hey guys, in this video we are going to look at how to use iOS on a iPod Touch. Now, Apple no longer makes this uh, product, uh, iPod Touch, so uh, I wanted to get this video in before it's just forgotten to society. This is the default setup of a uh, iPod Touch. I have just completed resetting this thing to defaults. Uh, so let's look at our operating system version first. I'm going to go into settings, and I think we're under general software updates. Uh, so we are on iOS 15.8.3. Now the tasks I completed with the uh, resetting this to defaults were the absolute minimum. Um, there is a startup wizard that starts automatically when you pull the device out of the box or reset to defaults. Uh, that had me choose my language and I chose English. Had me choose my country, I chose the United States. I chose to set this up manually as opposed to using quick start that allows you to copy settings from a phone or something. Um, I did go ahead and join a wireless network. Uh, after I joined a network, it did activate the device. There was a data and privacy caution that I accepted, and it had me add a passcode. So that's all I've uh, done for the setup of this device thus far. So if you are up to date on uh, iOS on your phone, on an iPhone, then uh, what you notice here is this is a older version of iOS. So the features are a little bit different here. Uh, let's see if I can scroll to the left here. Uh, we still have this widget screen here. And then if we uh, swipe to the right, uh, we can uh, have multiple screens of icons, and we still have the app library if we go all the way to the right. And then down at the bottom here, we have our, uh, um, our dock uh, with really similar icons and applications. Uh, now, one of the differences between uh, navigation here and on an iPhone is that uh, your control center is actually down at the bottom. So if I swipe up from the bottom, that's how I get into control center. Whereas if I swipe down from the top, that brings down uh, the uh, lock screen. So one of the things uh, that I chose not to do uh, with the, uh, with the uh, startup wizard, I, I chose to leave the display default instead of going into light mode or dark mode. Uh, it just defaults to light. Let's see if we can change that manually, though. Um, so I'm back in settings here. Display and brightness. And then I, uh, it's on light mode. I'm going to go ahead and go to dark mode. I could automate that with a schedule, but I'm just going to manually go to dark mode. And here I can change brightness. Um, night shift is available to us, uh, which just sort of changes the uh, tone of the colors to make it easier on you if viewing this uh, in the dark. Uh, auto lock after how long? I don't actually like auto lock. Not for a device that I don't have secure data on. Uh, raised awake, that's really more of a phone feature, I feel. And then text size. Uh, so uh, uh, the iPod Touch has a tiny screen on it uh, as far as uh, touchscreen devices. Uh, so I don't know if it benefits us to have bigger text or smaller text for uh, balance between visibility and navigation. Let's see what bold. I can go with bold there. Um, okay, there's our display settings. Uh, I'm going to click the home button to go back to the home now. So let's look at how to change our background here. Uh, I'm going to go into settings um, and here in settings, right there we have a uh, wallpaper. Um, dark appearance dims wallpaper. I uh, wonder what that is. Okay, so that changes kind of the tone of the wallpaper if you, when you're in dark mode. Let's choose a new wallpaper. Um, I, I don't have this connected to iCloud yet, uh, so I really only have the options that come built into the operating system. Uh, let's go with that one, and then we can choose that one. Uh, so then we have the option to set a background to the lock screen or the home screen or both, uh, so we can have different backgrounds on each area. And there we go, we've changed the background. I'm going to swipe down from the top here uh, so we can see that background on the uh, lock screen here as well. So with this being a uh, media player, ultimately, uh, uh, volume control is going to be relevant to us. On the left-hand side of the device, we have a volume up and volume down button. If I hit volume up, it turns up the volume. If I hit volume down, it turns down the volume. Now, I expect if we swipe up and go into Control Center, uh, right there we have manual control of volume available to us as well. 
So in order to be able to use most of the features of this device, in order to use my music or my photos, I am going to need to connect this to my iCloud account. So let's go through that process. Let me click on settings and then I go back to the first settings screen. Uh, up top here, um, I, I have the option to sign in uh, or to finish setting up, and either one of these would allow me to sign into my iCloud account. Uh, let's click on that top link where it says sign into your iPod Touch. Speed up your typing by sliding your finger across different letters to compose a word. Okay, so it has that slidey keyboard feature built into it. There we go, now it's signing us in. That did have me uh, uh, put in my password and a uh, multi-factor authentication code that it popped up on my other devices. It's having me put in my PIN as well here. All right, we are all signed into iCloud now. This is the screen that comes up as soon as it completes that sign-in process. Um, and so this is sort of my profile. I can see that my iCloud storage is associated and I can scroll up and down and see my other devices. So it appears that my account has connected just fine. Let's get back up to the home screen. So now that we're all signed in, we ought to be able to hop into the app store here and install an app. Let's go through the install and uninstall process of an application real quick. Um, I don't care about personalized ads. Um, and I'll allow location while I'm using it. And I'm just going to choose uh, let's go with uh, Diablo Immortal here. Um, I've installed it before, um, so I have a cloud there instead of that Git button. Uh, I'm going to click on that. And there we go, that app has finished installing. Let's hop back to the home screen. And uh, the very last app in the uh, on my home screen here is the uh, Diablo Immortal that we just installed. Now to uninstall that, uh, because that's all I'm showing here is install and uninstall, I, I'm gonna uh, press and hold that and say remove app. And then I, I have the option to just hide that app or uh, completely delete it from the device. And I'm going to delete it completely. And now that app is gone. So uh, there's how we can install and uninstall anything compatible from the App Store. But let's look at what's pre-installed here. Um, so this differs from a phone in that you don't have cellular connectivity. So in order to use these features, I will need to be connected to Wi-Fi. Um, but then we have a lot of the basic apps that we would expect on an iPhone uh, or similar device. Uh, we have FaceTime calendar, photos, camera, uh, contacts, clock, maps, uh, weather, uh, notes, reminders, stocks, uh, news, uh, books, uh, the app store, podcasts. We have the TV app, health, home, wallet, and then uh, we can access our files, uh, or find my devices. We can do shortcuts. Uh, there's a separate iTunes store for uh, uh, audio purchasing. Uh, we have the Translate app, voice memos. Uh, we have a relatively new, I guess not too new, and uh, this is two operating systems behind, but we have the Measure app, the calculator, and uh, Tips gives us some guidance on how to use the system. Then on our dock on bottom, you can see we have uh, Messages, Safari, uh, the Mail app, and the Music app. So with this being uh, primarily a media player, uh, let's look at the uh, music app. I'm going to pop that open. Now, I'm not going to be able to play any music here because of the digital rights protections. And then we can scroll down and see it loaded my recently played from my other devices. So we know that this is connected uh, to my iCloud account. So any of my music features I can access right here. Uh, radio stations. Let's look at the library. So uh, my uh, iTunes library, my music library, is, it's cloud hosted. So this is currently synchronizing my uh, cloud library. Now, the, my primary use case, not just playing music here, but specifically, uh, what I do is I put this in my car and connect it to my stereo, and I just leave it in my car. Uh, and in that scenario, I, I don't necessarily have Wi-Fi available. So uh, I, what I do with this device is I download songs from my cloud library, and then I can listen to music offline in my vehicle. So let's look at the uh, camera uh, real quick. Um, and I want to look at the camera because I'm leading into the Photos app. Uh, I'm clicking the camera app. And there is my uh, uh, standard camera. The resolution on this, uh, it's 
going to be a few generations behind. Uh, so I wouldn't use this for photography or anything, uh, but it is a quickly accessible camera for me that I just have in my vehicle. Um, I, I'm going to flip and look at the uh, front facing camera just to show that that's available as well. Um, so with our camera features, uh, we can do time-lapse, video, photo, square, pano. Uh, we have our basic uh, iPhone uh, camera features available. So with our uh, camera features, uh, that uh, allows us to take photos or video for uh, our Photos app. And then here in our Photos app, uh, do I want notifications? Not really. Um, Here's some information about what was new as of the time of, I guess, iOS 15. I'm going to click continue. And now this is synchronizing my uh, uh, photos with my iCloud. So we can minimize that, let that synchronize in the background. And uh, next, what I want to look at here is the Safari app. Um, so for me personally, I like in a corporate or work environment, I like having the ability to pass out uh, mobile devices that don't have cellular connectivity. Uh, and uh, that's kind of exactly what this device is. So let's pop open Safari here and uh, just look at the basics of that. Um, and the stuff that exists in here, uh, this is showing me that it is synchronizing with my iCloud and bringing in my shortcuts and customizations. Uh, I'm going to click on this address bar at bottom and uh, we'll uh, just go to Google here. Type in Google, click go, um, stay in Safari, and uh, that just shows that we have basic website navigation capabilities here. Then I'm going to minimize Safari there. Now, there are some brand new apps that we just don't have available to us. Uh, the uh, Apple has recently released a passwords app, and that is not available to us on this operating system. Now, the old uh, uh, iCloud keychain is available to us, um, and uh, anything you save in iCloud keychain will synchronize with the passwords app on uh, newer devices, uh, but the app itself is not uh, available to us on this device. So we do have a basic uh, 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 Siri integration here. Now, I think we can click and hold the home button. And okay, since I've not turned on the robot yet, it is asking me to turn it on. Um, and um, I'm not actually going to do that right now. Um, I think that'll interfere with uh, what we're showing here. Uh, but uh, you can either uh, go into settings to turn on that feature, or uh, all I'm doing here is tapping and holding the uh, home button, and that's popping up our assistant there. So let's look at customizing this dock at bottom just a little bit. Um, so I don't use this device for messages. Uh, so I wanna get rid of that. I don't wanna see the alerts. I don't wanna see the icon. Uh, I'm going to tap and hold on the messages uh, icon. And uh, okay, I had released it. So it took us to this edit screen for everything, but I'm gonna click that minus beside it. And uh, so I can't delete that app completely, but I can remove it from my home screen. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, now, I also uh, don't use this device for Safari or Mail either, so let's get rid of those as well. Remove from home screen. And now with Mail, it gives me the option to completely delete the application. And I'm going to do that because not only do I want to hide it, but I, I don't want any notifications or alerts from anything with Mail. I just don't want that integration. So I'm going to delete that app and then delete. And now that app's completely gone. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I clicked on the side of the dock there to take us back to this sort of normal operations, the non-edit view. So let's open a couple apps and see if we have uh, access to uh, app switcher here. Um, so I'm going to open photos here and go back to the home screen and weather here and go back to the home screen. Now what I'm going to do is double click the uh, home button and that brings us into our app switcher here. So that's how we can uh, quickly navigate multiple open apps. I'm going to swipe up on these. Uh, this iPod Touch does not have a lot of memory or processing, so I'm going to swipe up to close the apps that I'm not using. And now if I double click that home button, you see it just flashes to show me that there are no open apps. So then let's look at our Spotlight Search real quick. Um, Apple's been doing a lot with uh, Spotlight Search capabilities, so let's see kind of how to access that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the home screen somewhere, uh, not from the top edge or the bottom edge or the left edge or the right edge, but somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to swipe down. 
And when I swipe down there, that brings up this uh, search. The search is Spotlight. Uh, you can see the microphone on the right-hand side of that search field. So you could tap that and search by voice. Uh, my preference is usually to use a keyboard for the sake of control. Uh, I'm going to click Continue here, so uh, it allows me to search all of my items or the web or whatever I want. And now Search has access to my iCloud information and uh, website results. And from here, uh, we could just search for whatever we want to access. Um, let's go with Calendar. And then that brings up the Calendar app. Uh, you can do other stuff with uh, Spotlight, and I assume that carries over to this device. Four times four, and then that shows us that the answer is 16. So then I'd shown uh, the widget screen earlier, but let's swipe to the left and look at our widgets capabilities here. Um, so swiping to the left, this takes us to our widget screen. At the bottom, we can click Edit and uh, delete widgets if we care to. Uh, we've got the plus up top, so we can click that and add additional widgets. I usually do a music widget, then we can choose the size of our widget there. Let's go with a big one. And then add widget. And then that's how we can add and remove widgets from the widget screen. So that allows us to quickly access that information. So we also have the ability to use focus profiles on this device, and uh, assuming your uh, device is connected to Wi-Fi, uh, these will synchronize with your other devices. So I swiped up to go into Control Center here, and right there is my option to turn on or off uh, focus profiles. I can click on that and turn on Do Not Disturb, and now I won't get any alerts on this device. Um, or I can use any of my focus profiles. I clicked Do Not Disturb again to turn it off, and then I, I went back to the home screen here. Okay, so let's look at the integration with the Photos app. Um, maybe I don't want to wait for something to upload to iCloud. Uh, uh, is there a way to manually pull that in over a USB cable? Uh, well, let's pull up our Photos app. Then over in the left-hand side here, you can see it just populated uh, iPod Touch. I'm going to click on that. And then this is showing me uh, data, uh, videos, photos uh, that are on my iPod Touch that have not yet been uh, uh, imported to my uh, computer. Uh, so I clicked it to put a check on it, and I'm going to click to import new. And you can see under imports uh, in my Photos app that uh, video that I clicked is now imported. And uh, I should be able to see that in some different areas as well. Here we go. Um, it, this is just in my library, and that's available now. All right, so let's look at the options that we have with our iPod Touch on a computer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open Finder here, and over on the left-hand side under Locations, my iPod shows up in my list, and I'm going to click that. Now, if I click on that, this allows us to navigate through some admin functions. So I have this manual synchronization option down in the bottom right. I could click that to synchronize content. Um, here's our general screen. There's a button to, uh, I can check for updates and initiate an update uh, directly from my computer. Uh, we have backup options and then uh, just some configuration, quality configuration options. And then we can go through our different libraries and uh, uh, administer synchronization settings. Let's see what we have for music. Okay, so this is saying that since I'm using uh, iCloud uh, for my music library, uh, I can't manually configure uh, uh, what music is on this device. Now, if this were, uh, if I didn't have a ton of Apple devices, I would actually use this setting for the manual control without the dependence on a cloud. But because this would never negatively impact my phone and my computer, I, I can't really go in to show you all of these options. But those same sorts of uh, controls are available uh, here in movies or TV shows or photos. I, I can synchronize movies. Let's see, automatically include which movies? Uh, most recent or all of my movies? Now, I'm not going to auto-sync movies. I don't watch movies on this device. But then, same options for TV shows. And uh, Now, my photos, uh, same as with the music. I use iCloud Photo Library, uh, so I don't have those manual controls here. And then uh, files and info. Uh, it looks like with info, what uh, Apple is doing is sort of uh, combining contacts and calendars. So those are the settings that we have available uh, uh, on a Mac for administering our uh, iPod Touch. 
So let's look at the hardware that we're dealing with here with our uh, iPod Touch. And here, this is my iPod Touch. I'm going to uh, unplug the uh, charging cable from it. I'll show you that connects with a lightning connector. And there's that port. And then you can see you've got the speaker, the uh, analog headphone connectivity. And there's sort of a logo, what we're dealing with with the back. And this one I had ordered uh, straight from Apple, so I got the engraving on it. Here's our camera, our light sensor. Uh, up top, you can see there's the power or standby button. Over on the left-hand side, there's the volume up and volume down. Now, on the bottom here on the front, uh, the latest last iPod touches that they sold, you can see that it still had the physical home button on it. So that home button comes into play with some of our uh, uh, shortcuts, such as screenshotting. And there's the physical hardware we're dealing with, guys. All right, guys, that's what I have got prepared for us. We've looked at the basic functionality of an iPod, integration into the Photos app and into Finder on Mac OS, and we've done a quick overview of the hardware that is the iPod Touch. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Uh, please, if you've learned anything from my content, please consider subscribing to support the channel. Thank you.